We are going to look at trachoma, which is an, an infectious ophthalmic condition that affects uh, the eye. So trachoma basically is a Greek word which depicts rough. And as you'll see later, that actually is the characteristic of the upper eyelid, the inner part of the upper eyelid um, that uh, occurs as a result of this infection. So this is one of the leading causes of blindness, actually. Um, Trachoma itself is the leading cause of blindness among the infectious diseases. So it is caused by a bacterium that is chlamydia trachomatis, uh, which basically leads to some sort of inflammation of the um, cornea and the conjunctiva, um, then leading to a problem with um, the um, uh, transparent nature of the cornea and ultimately having opacities, and then we have blindness. So in terms of distribution, this is a condition that is found worldwide with an estimated 150 million cases that are active. And um, as we said earlier, trachoma is a major cause of blindness and it accounts to almost 20% of the blindness in the world. However, tra trachoma is the leading cause of preventable blindness, basically the one that can be prevented by other measures because this is a communicable disease. So in terms of endemicity, so in areas where it is endemic, um, active trachoma is common, especially among children, which basically um, the children are the most uh, affected population with a prevalence of between 60 to 90 percent of the cases in this endemic region. So most people who are affected are people living in close proximity to those who have the active uh, condition. As you can see in this um, world map, um, the areas with the yellow and uh, darker shades of yellow, that is orange. And basically, as you can see, it is within the tropics mostly or within um, uh, mostly Africa and some parts of South America, uh, India as well. So basically the developing world uh, is the part that is highly affected. So as you can see in the uh, Americas, North America and Europe areas, there are very few cases of trachoma. So as we said earlier, this is caused by a bacteria called Chlamydia trachomatis. And the way people end up having this is because of certain factors. So apart from the organism itself, its transmissibility is... Um, really, really helped by very dry and dirty conditions in areas where we have very, um, we have scarcity of water. Therefore, we have basically poor hygienic conditions um, and areas where we have um, these eye-seeking flies. As a result, um, we get one fly transmitting it to another person or they have not been able to wash their hands and they touch their eyes, which has trachoma and then it spread that way. So um, also, very young infants um, are also highly predisposed, uh, including um, uh, children who are still young because of the inability to actually maintain the hygiene of the um, face. So poverty and low socioeconomic status is also a factor as well as environmental factors such as dust or if you're staying in a dusty area or having irritants. So in terms of transmission, and we have a slightly touched on some of it. So the main source of um, this transmission is the discharge that is produced from the eye, basically from the conjunctiva. And that now discharge is, if touched, it can be spread from that eye to through their hands or the fingers to another uh, eye or to another person's eye. Okay, so if you touch the discharge or if it's a fly that comes, so basically through a vector transmission, a fly that comes, um, touches that discharge, then transmit, uh, takes it to another eye of another person. Or it can be material transfer, like through clothes or towels. So if you're using towels or to or some cloth to wipe, or for example, handkerchief that is dirty, like that you've used to wipe the discharge from your eye, then somebody else uses it, then that can be a way of transmission. So um, there's um, a progression that a trachoma normally have. So we can have different classification of this uh, progression. But first of all, if we look at these stages, the first uh, occurrence is the inflammation or the inflammation follicular. Basically, this we have formation of follicles. And as you can see here, and these follicles basically contain lymphocytes and they are trying to fight the bacteria. So this 
occurs just at the beginning. Then after that, we have uh, inflammation intense. So this, the eye is now highly infectious and it becomes more irritated and thickens and swells. Then afterwards, the eye now, um, the repeated in infection and the, the kind of scarring that is happening in the um, inner part of the eyelid leads to the eyelid now turning inward. And that is what we call entropion. Then after that, that inward turning leads to a state where now the eyelids start um, scratching the cornea itself, which is now a condition we call tracheosis. Basically, when the eyelids now are turned inside, uh, when the eyelids are turned inside, that is entropion, when the um, lashes now are rubbing across the cornea, that is tracheosis. That rubbing um, uh, leads to scarring and finally leads to corneal clouding or formation of the opacities because of the um, reinfection and the constant scarring. And then so it loses its transparency and opacities are formed. So we have corneal clouding, which ultimately now um, leads to inability to, to see. So if we look at the World Health Organization classification of trachoma, it has classified it into five uh, parts or five stages. So we have TF or T follicular, or we have follicles formation here. So the impression here is basically where we have active disease. And at this stage, that person needs treatment. So they can be given topical treatment or eye ointments. So the diagnosis is that we have follicles at this stage. Then we have the intense stage GI. Basically, we have, remember, severe disease. So this one here needs urgent treatment because if we let it go past this level, it becomes harder to treat. So there is thickening and pronounced inflammation that happens, and it goes deeper into the tussle plates of the uh, eyelid. Then TS is the scarring. Um, so this basically uh, is seen as white fibrous strands of the eyelid. Now past this stage, it becomes very difficult even to, to treat with um, eye ointment or other things. So trichiasis, remember we said now you have the turning. So this one needs corrective surgery. Um, and, and this can be diagnosed with presence of eyelashes. You might find eyelashes um, stuck on the cornea. Then ultimately we end up having opacities. And at this stage, things are irreversible and um, because of the presence of the opacities as well. So uh, some of these features we've already talked about, things like uh, corneal clouding, we'll see this, trichiasis, um, entropion, the scarring. But some some of the features we have not mentioned are like Hubbard speed. And this is um, basically a depression that is normally left from the follicles. And you can see uh, this is a, a manifestation of this. So actually on, on a real eye, you'll see some black dots just around uh, uh, around the um, edges of the cornea, as you can see here. Then you have um, papillary hypertrophy, basically engorgement of the small vessels. And finally, you have corneal panus, basically this vascularization of the cornea. And as you can see, you have like, you can even see the vessels around this place. Um, so diagnosis is quite simple. One is just clinical examination. So basically they use a magnifying glass to look at the upper eyelids and see whether you can see the follicles or the scarring or su such kind of things. Then you have swab. They can take a swab uh, and culture it or use a microscopy to actually see whether they can see the microorganism uh, chlamydia trachomatis. So management is uh, obviously this being a bacterial agent then we can use antibiotics like uh, tetracycline, azithromycin, erythromycin, sulfonamides. So, and actually, tetracycline ointment is the drug of choice, especially in the first stages. Um, also, epilation. Basically, epilation is the removal using a forcep of the uh, eyelashes that are scarring the, the cornea. So, because of the entropion. So, that one can be removed physically. That is called epilation. Now, when you get to the like stage four of the development, um, now surgical repair is um, the, the way to go. Basically, as you can see, there is an incision on the tassel plate and then it is corrected so that the entropion doesn't happen. Okay. So prevention and control is quite simple and it is based on what we talked about in the transmission. So availability and access to water goes a long way. Actually, just availability of water and hygiene, that uh, covers most of the 
problem and prevents most of the issues. But early screening and treatment can really work and also proper disposal of refuse. Now, World Health Organization has a um, strategy called the SAFE strategy, which includes now surgery to treat um, the advanced form. The A stands for the use of antibiotics. We've already talked about some, like tetracycline, azithromycin. Then facial cleanliness, we've already talked about the hygiene of the face, especially, and also environmental improvement. So things like uh, proper waste disposal, making sure we have water available. So that's all. Thank you.